Hi, welcome to Rhino Recap. In the middle of nowhere, while waiting for her car to be charged, Niche comes across a building named Black Museum, which keeps all authentic criminological artifacts. It's supposed to open at 11 a.m., but then she is approached by the museum owner, Rollo Haynes, who explains that the place is not for the faint-hearted and offers to give her a tour, as she is the first visitor today. After doing some inspection through her stuff, they proceed to the main room of the museum. As they walk, Niche explains that she is out this way to visit her father and celebrate his birthday as he lives nearby. The first stuff they come across is a device that looks like an electronic hairnet. Haynes starts to tell the story about the stuff and a little bit about his background. He was a neuroscientist for St. Juniper, a university hospital in New York which offers free health care for people in exchange for being allowed to be a test subject to their experimental treatment. Haynes approaches Dr. Peter Dawson, who just failed his surgery, in regards to testing an experimental neurological implant. He then explains that his team has just discovered a device which allows information to transfer from one brain to another. The experiment failed, but they found an interesting discovery when one of his employees spilled hot coffee all over the first mouse, Kenny. The device enables the second mouse, Hector, to feel the same physical sensation as Kenny. Hector will feel the same burn sensation as Kenny, but it will take no damage at all. Because of that, they managed to create a receiver that can be implemented to the human's body. Its purpose is to enable all the doctors to feel their patient's pain, without having to experience the physical damage, so that they would be able to cure the patients in the right way. Interested with the offer, the device then is applied to the doctor's neck. Thanks to that, Dawson becomes an expert at diagnosing and treating his patients. He also manages to save a lot of lives. It turns out that the implant also enables him to receive pleasurable sensations. Dawson also uses the device to enhance sex with her girlfriend by feeling her sensation, causing him to experience male and female orgasm at the same time. Everything is going well for the doctor until one night where a poisoned senator is brought into the hospital. Dawson is connected when the senator suddenly dies. It is the first time he experiences death. Dawson blacks out for a few minutes, but when he awakes, they discover that nothing is wrong with his body. However, he soon finds that the side effect is that he now experiences pain as pleasure. The more pain he feels, the more pleasure he gets, or people called it masochist. He starts demanding for rough sex, but when his girlfriend gets tired of it, he then begins hanging around at the hospital waiting for patients and craving for pain. At one night, when an old lady who suffered a heart attack is brought to the emergency room, Dawson starts to connect himself to her and uses her suffering for personal pleasure. He intends to buy some time so that the other doctor won't do the treatment, but eventually the security guards have to pull Dawson away from her. The next day he visits Haynes but he explains that he is not able to reverse the procedure, so the doctor has to be removed from the hospital. One night, Dawson finds that hurting himself will also bring the pleasurable sensation. Addicted to that, he begins mutilating himself. Not enough with that, he also tortures and kills a homeless man with a drill. By the time police find him, the extreme sensations of pleasure has caused him to fall into a coma and is put in the hospital until now. Back to the present, Haynes is covered by sweat and Niche offers him a bottle of water since the museum AC is broken. After that, they move to the one of the saddest objects in the place, which is a monkey doll and he starts to tell the story behind it. Jack and Carrie are a happy couple with their new baby. When Carrie wants to take a photo of her husband and son, she suddenly gets hit by a truck and falls into a coma. Jack visits his wife regularly, but she never awakes. They communicate using a neurotechnology, which allows Carrie to give yes or no responses. One day, Haynes approaches the husband and offers a procedure for her wife which transfers Carrie's consciousness into his brain and allows her to see and hear everything he does. It also enables Jack to talk to her again. At first, he is uncertain when told that they need to kill Carrie first, but Carrie agrees by responding from the device. They begin the operation and it is successful. Carrie is now able to feel the hug from their grown son, Parker. However, the shared consciousness begins to take a toll on the couple, as Jack feels a lack of privacy and Carrie keeps complaining about whatever he does. The couple then meets Haynes, who offers Jack more privilege by allowing him to put Carrie on pause. Tired of being watched, Jack decides to put his wife on a pause for weeks, but this action just infuriates her whenever he allows her consciousness again, making the relationship worse. Then, Jack meets Emily and the two begin dating. Not happy with Carrie disturbing their relationship, they meet Haynes and Emily forces him to transfer Carrie's consciousness out of him completely. Deleting the consciousness means death for Carrie, so Haynes suggests transferring her into a monkey doll with a camera, which is then given to their son, Parker. Unfortunately, the doll can only speak two phrases, monkey loves you and monkey needs a hug. 
Carrie is furious and keeps spamming the button, but Emily threatens to delete her completely if she does not behave. As Parker grows up, he eventually gets bored with the doll and abandons it, with Carrie trapped inside it. In the present, Haynes claims that he was fired because of that invention as it is perceived inhuman and illegal. He also reveals that Carrie is still inside the monkey doll since it is illegal to delete her. They then move to the prime exhibit of the museum, which is a dismal hologram projection of Clayton Lee, killer of a lady named Denise Stockley. The idea behind this is to transfer the consciousness of people on the death row, so Haynes approaches Clayton and persuades him to sign over the rights which allows him to use his post-death consciousness in exchange for money to support the killer's family. Clayton's wife is worried at first, but he assures that the amount of money she will receive will be enough to fund their kids. After his execution, Haynes manages to resurrect Clayton, but as a hologram inside the museum. He sets Clayton up in an execution display, in which the visitors could pull a lever to make Clayton scream as he feels the agony of being electrocuted without killing him. The visitors will also be rewarded a keychain souvenir, displaying a copy of Clayton screaming in agony. This torture machine has turned the museum into big success as it is usually filled with visitors who are happy to see the killer gets tortured over and over again. Haynes explains that each electrocution is set to last 10 seconds. If it reaches more than 15 seconds, it would break the hologram and could erase it. While explaining, Haynes suddenly starts choking and discovers that he has been poisoned by Niche. She also has sabotaged the museum air conditioner so that Haynes would become thirsty and accept the water offer. Surprisingly, Niche reveals herself to be Clayton's daughter. She then claims that his father is actually innocent and there have been several actions done to support his father, but it never works as the state never cares. The least thing the protesters could do was to post a threat on social media, which ended up hurting the museum's popularity and decreasing the visitors significantly. Because of that, the museum now attracts wealthy sadists, who would pay more to torture Clayton exceeding its limit, turning him into empty shell, not dead but hardly alive. Until one day, Nisha's mom comes to see what has happened to her husband. Depressed, she takes a bottle of pills and vodka, causing her death by overdose. Haynes then dies and Nish transfers his consciousness into Clayton's hologram. She pulls the lever to the maximum, causing Haynes to experience the full force of being electrocuted while also finally putting Clayton's consciousness into rest. After that, along with her monkey doll and the souvenir containing Haynes screaming in agony, Nish walks out from the museum. Before returning to the car, she removes an electronic device from the AC compressor which causes it couldn't work and sets it on fire. At the end of the film, Nish is caught having a conversation with her mom, revealing that they have been sharing consciousness. Nish drives away with her mother shedding joyful tears as the museum is engulfed in flames. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more such videos. See you next time.